common question I'm asked in the community and by my patients is what individuals can do to better their chances from a screening standpoint, but more importantly, what they can do to prevent the development of GYN cancers. And that's a broad question, but a very, very good question. Number one, the best screening test from a standpoint of detecting, excuse me, detecting GYN cancers would be the pap smear. That truly is the single most effective screening mechanism for GYN malignancies that we have at this time. Important to note in a common misconception by women is that a pap smear is really a screening test for all GYN cancers. And a pap smear is specific to screening for cervical cancer. It is not a test for screening for ovary cancer or uterus cancer. The best thing women can do is to have regular visits to the gynecologist or their general practitioner for pap smears. The most common GYN cancer in the United States is uterine or otherwise known as endometrial cancer. The most common presenting sign or symptom with endometrial cancer is abnormal bleeding, whether you're 45 or 65. Um, if you start having abnormal heavy bleeding, or more importantly and more specifically, abnormal what we call intermenstrual bleeding, meaning that if you're pre premenopausal and still having regular periods, if you start having abnormal bleeding in between those periods, you need to seek out your medical professional to be ruled out for endometrial cancer. Once a woman goes through menopause, the most common sign of endometrial cancer is bleeding. And it doesn't have to be bleeding like a period. It can be a spot of blood in a woman's undergarment. They need to seek a medical professional because something is not right that's causing that. And commonly, that is a pre precursor to endometrial cancer called hyperplasia, or it can be uterine cancer. And women do a very good job of catching uterine cancer at an early stage. Unlike ovary cancer, we catch most of those at a very early stage, such as stage one, where the majority are cured with surgery alone. At this point in time, the best we can do for ovary cancer is to receive annual physical exams by a trained professional for pelvic exams, etc. If you have any symptoms whatsoever of abnormalities felt in the pelvis, such as urinary frequency or urgency, constipation, bloating, feeling full quickly, abdominal distension, those are the signs that you need to seek medical attention and be screened or ruled out for ovarian cancer. And it's usually quite simple, meaning that a pelvic exam, but more importantly, an ultrasound of the GYN organs helps us a lot tell whether the ovary is normal or abnormal. Surprising to a lot of patients, the pelvic exam is really not a very good, reliable means of ruling out an ovarian mass. If you have symptoms, do not rely on just a pelvic exam as a means of being normal. Normal ovaries, I mean. If you have complaints, certainly demand or request an ultrasound to evaluate the ovaries because in many, many common circumstances, a physician will do a pelvic exam and believe that the ovaries feel normal, but on ultrasound, surprisingly, there's a cyst or abnormality on the ovaries. Other things that we can do to help prevent GYN malignancies is know your genetic profile. And what I mean by that is there are certain family syndromes where we see genetic links to cancers. The vast majority of GYN cancers most commonly ovary and uterus cancer, do not have a genetic link that is inherited from family member to family member to family member. However, approximately about 10% of those cancers are related to a genetic link. And so if you come from a family where you see commonly ovary, breast cancer, colon cancer on one side of the family that is affecting many members of that family, certainly seek out questions or expertise from a GYN oncologist, OBGYN, internal medicine doctor, and ask to have some screening tests done to see if you apply um, to have your genetics evaluated.